So guys, today is the day the Guardian takedown arrives and with it a gigantic patch which Gearbox have just dropped details on. Today we go through the entire thing. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and today I bring you another VR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. So let's get straight into the patch notes guys. Today we will release an update for Borderlands 3 which will go live or be live on all platforms by 12pm PST. This update adds the new takedown, the takedown at the Guardian Breach, addresses the first phase of changes to Mayhem 2.0 and addresses some player report concerns. The seasonal event Revenge of the Cartels officially ends today at 9am PST. We hope everyone enjoyed the experience, the music and the gear. With today's patch and hotfixes, players will no longer be able to travel to the villa until next year. So people, it's coming back next year, that's a confirmation. For those worried about the availability of the awesome anointments that dropped as part of this event, those are here to stay, which I've covered in the past. Make sure that you have your hotfixes applied to ensure that they are a part of the pool of potential dropped anointments. To apply hotfixes to the main menu until you see a sign that says hotfixes applied as you know people. So getting into the actual details of the patch and the patch notes. New content. Added support for new free content being added to the base game of Borderlands 3 Takedown at the Guardian Breach. Fight for your life improvements. Added cooperative reviving, when more than one person is reviving a down player, the player will be revived faster. This is only supported for cooperative players. Slowed the movement speed of down players who are actively being revived by a cooperative player. Increased the interactive radius around down players to make it easier to start reviving them. Added visual effects to the downed player being revived and the player reviving the down player to help visualize the act of reviving. Added support to show mayhem levels and item cards. Now this is a big one people. This basically shows the level of the weapon. Say if you have a Chaosan, you had it drop in Mayhem 10. You don't know if it's a Mayhem 10 weapon. This will confirm that by adding uh, details on the weapon's item card. Stating if it's a Mayhem 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, stability. Addressed a report of concern where some players could experience a crash after being kicked three times in a row from a host game. Addressed a report of concern of a crash that could sometimes occur after a client respawns in the mission Angels and Speed Demons in Comrades Hold. Addressed a report of concern of a crash that could sometimes occur when engaging with enemies with the wedding invitation with the Galaxy Brain Mayhem modifier active. Address a report of concern of a crash that could sometimes occur when the horse entered combat at the beginning of the fourth round in the system of slaughter. Addressed several reported crashes. Optimizations. Improved performance when navigating vending machines. UI optimizations for consoles. Improved inventory performance. Improved quick menu performance. Improved main menu performance. Improved item inspection performance. Improved body widget performance. Improved model tutorial performance. Improved memory by removing unnecessary frames from the skill tree menus. Improved performance when dragging and dropping items in their inventory menu. Addressed a report of concern that players could sometimes experience a noticeable frame rate drop when navigating the character menu in split screen. Addressed a report of concern that performance would sometimes drop after picking up the echo log during the demon in the dark in Conrad's hold. An improved HUD performance. General. Addressed a report of concern that the camera would sometimes tilt sideways when using the high fire rate weapons and strafing at the same time. Disabled all control input when a game window is not in focus on PC. Disabled access to the quick menu when players are in vehicles or turrets. Addressed a report of concern that an outrunner can sometimes be launched into the air and out of playable space when a user enters the vehicle in Moody and Metroplex. Addressed a report of concern that the bodies of dead enemies would sometimes stretch when inside the elevator in Conrad's hold. Addressed a report of concern that the host player can escape the map when crouching in the doorway of a client's room when they leave their session in Sanctuary. 
Addressed air report of concern that hitting an out of bounds area with a vehicle trigger fight for your life. Address the cost of ammo at vending machines to derive from the player's level instead of the vending machine's level. Addressed a concern that pinstripes and filigree were sometimes missing from some player's skins. Addressed a report of concern that the anointment 300% damage above 90% didn't work with non flesh enemy types. Addressed a report of concern that Guardian perks would only be considered active during this session, you unlock them in. Addressed a report of concern that elemental puddle decals would sometimes remain the clients when reloading the map while the puddles are present. Updated credits. Added previous hotfixes to the game. Addressed a report of concern where the hint bar would appear spaced out and stretched across the bottom of the screen in the skill tree menu. Addressed a report of concern that the play button in the echo log menu would sometimes be displayed incorrectly. Borderlands Science added a 10 second cooldown timer until a player can request to skip the current puzzle to get a new one in Borderlands Science. Addressed a report of concern where a Borderlands Science booster could be removed when joining another game session. Character. Addressed a report of concern that the operative's action skill anointed effects can be affected by other action skills when activating two action skills at the same time. The Echo Cast added an in world marker to improve discoverability of Muxdale's chest in game. Addressed a report of concern in Echo Cast where the Muxdale buff was the last when joining another game session. Addressed a report of concern with Echo Cast where the rare chest win account stat was incorrect. Effects. Address to report concern where smoke or steam would flicker in Sanctuary after extended gameplay. Okay, so onto Mayhem 2.0. Rebalance Mayhem stats for enemy health, shields, and armor in Mayhem level 7, 8, 9, and 10. Mayhem level 7, 8, 9, and 10 had their stat bonuses to health, shields, and armor reduced. On Mayhem 10, the bonus is now 10,000% instead of 12,500%, and the curve from level 7 to 10 has been adjusted accordingly. Made a change so only the host player can roll or apply modifier changes to Mayhem. Addressed a report of concern that Agonizer 9000, the Kraken, Walton, and Ista were sometimes not spawning Mayhem level gear. While we wait for chests and vending machines to support Mayhem level gear in the next patch, as stated in our Mayhem 2.0 dev update, these enemies were fixed so they support Mayhem as a stop gap. The Mayhem modifiers mob, mentality and chain gang can no longer be rolled together. The Mayhem modifier floor is lava and now fires off less frequently and the damage taken no longer counts towards keeping the player in combat. The Mayhem modifier Chain Gang now creates beams when the player is closer and dissipates when further away, allowing them to fire less frequently. Optimize combat timer for refresh for Mayhem. The four changes above were made to keep Mayhem 2.0 running smoothly, and we will continue to monitor the performance of Mayhem 2.0 and make adjustments in the future. The buddy system and the drone range of Mayhem modifiers are continuing to go through testing and are not going to be turned back on at this time. Addressed a report of concern that players would sometimes not load incorrectly after throwing grenades and making changes to Mayhem mode. Addressed a report of concern that the travel countdown timer would sometimes not display the map name when applying Mayhem modifier changes after the player activated a new use station that was not a fast travel station. Addressed a report of concern that the numerical indicator on the Mayhem pedestal would not display properly after adjusting the level. Addressed a report of concern that the UI for the boundary turret warning would remain on screen when changing Mayhem settings while in a restricted area. Addressed a report of concern that the enemy death from the post mortem Mayhem modifier was unable to cause damage to Moses' auto bear or to players in Iron Bear's gunner seat. Addressed a report of concern that the enemy death from the post mortem Mayhem modifier would circle in place if spawned from an enemy that the player did not take down. Added a limit to the number of visual impact effects spawn when projectiles take damage with post mortem and freeze tag mayhem modifiers. Post mortem, Healy, Avenger, and freeze tag will now check for the dying enemy's allegiance relative to the player when deciding if they should spawn. Addressed a report of concern that players could be briefly put into fight for your life when the mayhem modifier rogue light is active. Addressed a report of concern that beams spawned from the boundary issues mayhem modifier could sometimes become visually attached to the player. Addressed a report of concern that beams spawned from the boundary issues mayhem modifier could sometimes stay attached to the player after defeating an enemy NPC turned friendly. 
addressed a concern that a beam effect would sometimes not trigger the boundary issues may modify if there was an obstruction between the player and the enemy. Addressed a point of concern that some heads were sometimes not scaling properly with the Galaxy Brain Mayhem modifier active. Addressed a concern that Mayhem modifier abilities would occasionally not run properly on enemies. Addressed a point of concern with weapon drops from enemies down via critical hit, while the loot explosion Mayhem modifier was active sometimes not always matching the current Mayhem level. Vehicles can now be the targets of Mayhem modifiers. So that is that people and those were all the changes to Mayhem 2.0 and quite a lot there. On to UI. Addressed every point of concern where D-pad glyphs to change the tracked mission were still displayed on the hood when playing with the classic button scheme. Addressed every point of concern where an empty prompt would be displayed on the hood above the experience bar after spending skill points. Addressed every point of concern that multiple message slide outs would appear and overlap after disconnecting a controller. Addressed every point of concern where the speed of the UI menu would vary when adding a split screen player. Addressed every point of concern where the client's countdown would not appear on the screen after accepting a dual invitation. Added improvements to text chat. Updated hint text for changing the viewed event to change viewed event. Addressed every point of concern that parts of the hood would sometimes be missing when quickly pausing and resuming the game. Okay, so hot fixes. This week we have a variety of gear balance changes, as promised in the Mayhem 2.0 dev update, and hot fixes specifically for takedown at the Guardian Breach. To get the changes and avoid seeing any of these issues arise, make sure that you have your hot fixes applied at the main menu. Added revenge of the cartel's anointments to the permanent drop pool for gear. Addressed every point of concern that spikes from Manticores and Korax ignored Zane's barrier. Rebalance the number of enemies active at one time during the takedown at the Guardian Breach. Rebalance the health of some enemies during a takedown at the Guardian Breach. Address a potential progression blocker when fast traveling during takedown at the Guardian Breach. Address a concern with the operator center not targeting enemies in some cases. Okay, so weapon adjustments people, and there's quite a lot to go through here for sure. As stated in the patch notes, we have adjusted the health, shield and armor stats for Mayhem levels 7 and higher. As part of that change, we need to adjust gear to reflect that. With the decrease in enemy health, shield and armor in later levels of Mayhem, all gear you have currently will feel more effective as you take down enemies in those higher levels. SMGs have proven to be one of the most popular weapon types, so we focused on them with this update. We've decided that this amount of change was all we were comfortable with when paired with the scaling changes. We will observe player feedback over the coming weeks and likely make further adjustments as needed. Weapon buffs. The number of viable SMGs felt low compared to the relative depth of weapons of that type. As a result, several of them have had damage increases this week. Increase weapon damage on Bitch. Increase weapon damage on Handsome Jackhammer. Increased weapon damage on the Devoted. Increased weapon damage on the Collab Kill. Increased weapon damage on the Tsunami. Increased weapon damage on the 10 Gallon. And increased melee damage bonus for Ripper. The Ripper's melee damage bonus wasn't providing enough incentive to execute its intended loop. We've buffed the damage on the melee strike. Increased weapon damage on Vanquisher. The base damage for the Vanquisher and its bonus damage while sliding have been buffed. Like the Ripper, its core loop wasn't being used as the slide bonus wasn't significant enough prior to this change. Increased damage bonus while sliding on Vanquisher. The Ripper and Vanquisher should be effective now when embracing their unique loops. Weapon nerfs. We found that a few pieces of gear were overperforming or not working as intended which unintentionally pushed players into builds exclusively using them. It also allowed players to bypass the intended growth of moving up the mayhem levels over time. By lowering these values and addressing some data, players should feel able to experiment with other pieces of gear. The Sandhawk. The Sandhawk was creating too many particle systems, which we found creating issues related to performance. It also was creating too much damage relative to other sniper rifles. To combat this, we've made the following changes. Increased shot costs from 2 to 3. We've increased the cost of firing the weapon so that players have to more thoughtfully manage ammo. With the additional SDUs that were added in the Revenge of the Cartels patch, players should still be able to use this weapon quite a bit. Remove two projectiles. As stated, the performance cost of this weapon was too high, so we've removed two particle systems from each shot. This also removes some damage output from the weapon. Increased weapon accuracy spread. 
To make up for the difference for the missing projectiles, we've spread out the pattern so it still covers the same space. Lowered lifetime of projectiles. Too many active particle systems from consecutive shots was really hurting performance, so we've lowered the lifespan of the projectile. Increased projectile speed. It was important to use to keep the weapon still effective in combat, so to counter the lowered lifetime of the projectiles, we've sped them up. The result is a weapon that still feels as effective as before and even more responsive. Okay, so on to the yellow cake, which we all know a nerf was coming. We've discovered an unfortunate issue with the yellow cake that effectively added an extra 100% damage beyond its intended output. We're fixing it today. Change damage scaling. The wrong scaling math was applying to the yellow cake, greatly increasing its damage beyond its intended value. We are changing it to its intended math. Split projectile damage decrease. We are lowering the damage of each of its split projectiles as they were overperforming as well. Wow. Can't wait to try that out now. The Chaosin. The Chaosin was providing more power than intended, which made it the go to SMG. With today's changes, it should still provide plenty of damage that focuses on explosive damage bonuses, but not quite at the scale as in the past. Accuracy impulse increased. Its accuracy allowed players to deal pinpoint damage. Then with the added explosive damage, it was further maximizing output. We are increasing the accuracy impulse to account for the explosive damage bonus better. Max accuracy increased. At full auto, the spread proved exceedingly tight. Again, allowing more damage to be maximized than we intended. We've increased the maximum accordingly. Critical damage reduced. The explosive damage provided by this weapon allows critical hits more frequently. So we are lowering its critical bonuses by a small amount. Base damage decreased. As the Chaos Sun basically hits two points of damage, the initial bullet and then the explosive round, it was providing way more damage than a typical SMG. We're lowering its base damage to better account for its dual damage feature. So wow, my favorite SMG people seems to have been nerfed. This again, I will try out and let you know my opinion on it. Anointment buffs. Several anointments in the game were not providing enough value, effectively making them non-viable for players. In an effort to increase build diversity, we are buffing a number of anointments. Airborne anointments. We've increased the effectiveness of the wild airborne damage, critical damage and fire rate anointment. The airborne fire rate anointment had a bug as well, which is being fixed to substantially improve this anointment. We're anxious to see what builds will be used in takedown at the Guardian Breach in particular. Slide fire rate. It had a bug as well that prevented it from providing the intended bonus. We've resolved that in these hotfixes. Action skill end. A number of these types of anointments have been buffed to make them more useful for more builds. Fire rate next to mag bonus damage and splash damage have all received damage increases. And finally people, auto bear active incendiary damage. This has received a significant buff to make iron bear builds more effective. And wow, what a patch. So yes, all this and all of what I have covered, the changes to the game, the hot fixes, the weapon buffs, nerfs and so much more will be applied later today, which today's date is the 11th of June 2020. By the time you've actually watched this video, they're probably already applied to your game. But this is what has been changed, guys, with the Guardian Takedown, the new free event, which will also be live for you guys as you watch this. But yeah, guys, some massive, massive changes indeed. Some crazy nerfs to fan favorite weapons, the Yellow Cake and the Chaosin. Some buffs to other SMGs too. So it'll be quite interesting to test out. But yeah, guys, that is it for another video. Tell me your thoughts down below in that comment section. On that note, we have come to the end. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video or upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you on that next. One.